Anthony Upward, and I'm a sustainability business architect with Edward James Consulting. I'm also the co-founder of the Strongly Sustainable Business Model Group at the Ontario College of Art and Design University's Strategic Innovation Lab. Recently, I completed a three-year research project to create a better tool to design better businesses. This tool is the Strongly Sustainable Business Model Canvas and is described in our other videos. In this video, I wanted to share what I learned during a critical piece of that research. What is design and why is design so important for creating better businesses? Like all our videos, a link to view and download the slides I'm using, including the speaker's notes and all the references, is shown below the video. If we're aiming at to design better, strongly sustainable businesses, we ought to start by being clear about what we mean when we say sustainability. I hate to start such a practically orientated topic with such an existential question, but why are we here? As a practical bunch of business people, we often think that such questions are of little importance day to day. But what we do recognize is that there's something good and special about what we've created for ourselves in the world today. And we freely acknowledge we'd rather like all the good stuff to carry on and all the bad stuff to be improved over time. So actually, in some way, we're all interested in this thing called sustainability. But let's not forget, sustainability is an adjective or an adverb, so we really ought to be specific. What exactly do we want to sustain in our businesses? Who's going to benefit when we sustain it? How long are we going to sustain it for? How much is that going to cost? And how are we going to measure all of that? But hang on, the verb to sustain also has some strong connotations of keeping things the same as they are now. But nature isn't static. For example, a river is never the same moment to moment. And over longer periods of time, the root of a river can change dramatically. And there's another wrinkle. What we want to sustain is a choice. So it must be based on what we value. And two things are certain about our values. Everyone's values are different, sometimes not by much, sometimes by a lot, and everyone's values change over time, sometimes quite quickly. So back to the example of the river. Not only is the river always changing, but so is the person watching from the bank. So what I came to realize, as I hope you can appreciate, when we start to talk about sustainability, the inconvenient truth for business is it's not going to be simple. To sustain means keep things the same, but the world is always changing, and so are we. I'm not going to apologize for this reality. The world is a complex place, and pretending it isn't doesn't seem like a smart approach. In fact, denying important elements of reality is highly risky behavior, particularly for business. So as you design your business, how do you answer these questions? What do you want to sustain? Who will benefit? How long do you want to sustain it for? And how much are you willing to invest? Have a think about your answers to that question for your business. From what we covered a moment ago, it's clear that if you want to design a sustainable business, you have to come up with answers to the, these four questions while considering your own understanding of how nature works, your own personal values, and of course, your practical situation. How would you answer these questions for your business? As you reflect, it's worth bearing in mind the commonly accepted response, at least in the democracy of the global north. What we want to sustain is the maximization of wealth creation so that we can afford all the things that benefit the public education, roads, public transit, healthcare, and various types of insurance, like unemployment and pensions. Before I proceed, I want to share the answer I chose to these questions following my extensive review of the natural and social science literature. Note that I'm sharing this not to convince you that I'm right, but rather just to show you where I'm coming from. As you'll see from my other videos, when you come to design your better business using my tool, it's your answer to these questions that count, not mine. I think that in our existing goal, we've got means and ends mixed up. We correctly recognize that in our chosen economic system, wealth is required in order to be able to create the public good. But by putting wealth creation first, we've allowed our sister selves to forget why we wanted that wealth in the first place. I think we need a new collective goal. John Ehrenfeld, a retired MIT scholar, has brilliantly and inspiringly suggested that what we want as a species to aspire to is the possibility that human and other life will flourish on this planet forever. What do I like about this definition of sustainability? Well, it actually answers the four questions that we discussed a moment ago. It includes what? It's about the possibility. It's about how good we can be. It's not about mere survival. It also includes who's going to benefit. It's very inclusive. It's human and other life. It includes for how long? Forever. And it starts to talk about how much. Although it doesn't talk about cost directly, it does start to indicate that there are going to be some costs that are going to be very hard to measure economically. It's also worth noting that Ehrenfeld's definition aligns very well with the ecological economist's definition of strong sustainability. But whatever answers you choose, 
what you want to sustain in your business. Once you've set your goal, you need a business strategy and a business model to achieve it. Some time ago, Herbert Simon said that design isn't just about things. He said that anything human create, anything artificial, whether tangible like a car or intangible like a business model, is in fact design. More recently, former dean of the Rotman School of Management at the University of Toronto, Roger Martin, pointed out that this means that business people are primarily designers. And one of the key things they must design is their strategy and a business model to realize that strategy. So if businesses are designed, what's the design brief that society historically gave to businesses to frame their creation of their strategies and business models? Perhaps the best known summary of the goal for business was written by Milton Friedman in 1962. What we want business to do is generate the wealth so we can afford the public goods we want and need. And we can say that this has been a huge success on a huge range of measures of human flourishing, from education levels to informal infant mortality to life expectancy, clearly as a species we've done well by this approach. For most people, things are materially better than they were 10, 50 or 100 years ago. But from my research, I could also clearly see there are a lot of problems. I started to wonder, did we leave something out? Are there any unintended consequences of this design brief for business that we should be concerned about? Unfortunately, the answer is yes. Back in 2002, McDonough and Braungart, in their very popular book, Cradle to Cradle, identified this rather long list of rather serious unintended consequences of our historic design brief for business. And worse, the scientific evidence is growing every day that the speed, scale and depth of these consequences, environmentally, socially and psychologically, are getting worse. Indeed, so dire are the consequences, some of these now threaten our ability to survive, let alone flourish. But unfortunately, that's not all. There's another unintended consequence of our current choice. I'm sure you're all familiar with the anecdote concerning the tiny number of Fortune 500 companies that stay on that list over long periods of time. Unfortunately, it's not just an anecdote. Research by the Organization of Economic Cooperation and Development shows that we're actually not even very good at creating firms that reliably create the wealth that we want. In this report, the OECD suggests that 60% of firms in the manufacturing and service sectors in six of the larger OECD countries cease to exist within seven years of their founding. So if we don't want to produce the unintended consequences we're getting from business as a result of the current design brief, we need to change what we're asking business to do. We need a design brief for better businesses to create better outcomes. In their book, McDonough and Braungart also suggested two possible better design briefs for business. The first might be called the design brief for corporate social responsibility, or green or responsible business. It pretty much aligns with what the ecological economists call weak sustainability or an eco-efficient approach. The second might be called the design brief for flourishing. It pretty much aligns with what the ecological economists call strong sustainability or an eco-effectiveness approach. Which of these two, two design briefs should you choose for your business? I think that depends on how you've chosen to define sustainability for your business, how you've chosen to answer the questions of what to sustain, for whom, for how long, and at what cost. In other words, which design brief you think is right for your business depends on your values and your understanding of nature and your practical situation. But irrespective of which design brief you choose for your business, maximizing monetary profit, attempting to be less unsustainable, or striving to create the conditions for human and other life to flourish, you need to design your business to meet your goal. But how? Not only that, but how do you do it well? How do you produce a design for your business of high quality, one that reliably, consistently, and effectively meets your chosen goal? What's the best way to do this design work, and how can we be efficient at designing businesses? As you start to design a business, what does a business design actually look like? We have lots of labels for many aspects of business design, but what are the topics that you must include in your business design? What are the questions you must answer? And how would we know a good business design if we saw one? The previous best practice answers to how you design a business and what a business design should contain can be summarized as follows. You have an idea which you write up in a business plan. You convince people to give you money, you work very hard, and you cross your fingers. And this approach is still very widely used, despite the fact, as the OECD report suggests, it doesn't reliably produce profitable businesses. Clearly, compared to other fields of design, like designing cars, where we're now really pretty good at designing reliable cars, this approach for designing businesses has some problems. Indeed, some people have likened this approach for designing businesses to deliberately burning piles of the money that we're given to build our businesses. Of course, some business failures are there because those businesses are not fit for purpose. But I think we'd all acknowledge that there are significant financial, social, personal, and environmental costs when firms go out of business. It's clearly not a good thing when a business fails. 
whether you're an employee, a customer, a supplier, an investor, or a member of the community. Can't we more reliably design successful businesses? With this question in mind, nearly 10 years ago, Alex Osterwalde and Professor Yves Bigneur set out to improve things, using the process of design to more efficiently, effectively, and reliably create businesses that would be profitable. The result of their work was the business model canvas, a paper-based visual design tool that more reliably allows you to design profitable businesses. This tool has a solid theoretical underpinning that is described in Oster Boulder's 2004 PhD, and it is described in a highly accessible way in the now very popular book, Business Model Generation. As of summer 2013, it sold over 700,000 copies in 26 languages and has been in the top 10 of the Amazon Business Books list since its 2009 launch. And most recently, it's been complemented by an iPad web app that enhances the usability of the canvas. Now, before we ask for the money for our business, we know that if we answer the nine questions well, that the business model canvas asks us, the likelihood is that our pile of cash will actually create a profitable business and not go up in smoke. Clearly, this is a big step forward over the previous best practice. But now, as I refer to it, the profit first business model canvas only focuses on the question that drives monetary profitability. It ignores almost all the other things that the design briefs for better business tells us are important. The existing tools don't ask the questions that need to be answered if you want to create better businesses with fewer unintended consequences or if you want to create a business that aims to create the possibility for human and other life to flourish. This means it's hard to create better businesses with these existing tools. So how can we efficiently and reliably design better businesses? After surveying the existing business design tools, I realized that these are only focused in designing profitable businesses ignoring all the factors that lead to unintended consequences that we're all becoming increasingly familiar with. None of the existing tools help business people systematically identify the risks and opportunities of being a better business. So recognizing this problem with the existing business design tools, in 2010 I went back to university full-time to do an interdisciplinary master's degree to create a better tool to help people design better, strongly sustainable businesses. I chose the highly customizable program in environmental studies and business offered by York University's Faculty of Environmental Studies and Schulich School of Business. One day in 2012, I met the folks from the Ontario College of Art and Design University's Strategic Innovation Lab, the S Lab. Some of them had helped Alex Osterwalder develop what is currently the most popular profit-first business model design tool, the Business Model Canvas, and had helped fund his very popular book, Business Model Generation. The people in the S Lab were inspired by the progress I had already started to make towards a better tool to create better businesses. So in 2012, we created the Strongly Sustainable Business Model Group, and we decided we should focus on creating a toolkit to help new and existing small and medium businesses move to better, more sustainable business models. And we decided my new tool would be the center of that toolkit. Finally, a few months back, and after nearly three years of work, and with a lot of help from a lot of people, we reached a major milestone. I successfully defended my thesis and graduated. So what is this better tool to design better businesses? In my three years of research, I went all the way back to Alex Osterwalder's groundbreaking 2004 PhD, where he defined an ontology for profitable businesses. Then I used all the natural and social science about strong sustainability and about how to, how design, how to design businesses that do good and do well to extend the original PhD to create an ontology for strongly sustainable business. But like Alex Osterwalder, I knew I needed to simplify it to make a tool that was easy to use without losing any of the rich possibilities for designing better businesses that I'd learned about. So again, following Osterwalder's lead, I used the ontology to power a new, easy-to-use visual design tool to help design better businesses, the Strongly Sustainable Business Model Canvas. The Strongly Sustainable Business Model Canvas asks 14 questions that, if you answer well, significantly increase the likelihood of creating a strongly sustainable business model. To learn more about Strongly Sustainable Business Model Design and the new tool, the Strongly Sustainable Business Model Canvas, you can watch our other videos. So what are the next steps to bring the better Strongly Sustainable Business Model Canvas to the world to help create more better businesses? There are three things that I'd like to share. First, my thesis, which contains the canvas, is licensed under a Creative Commons license, but this has a commercial restriction. So if you want to start using the canvas today, you need to join our first Explorers program. It's just a simple mutual NDA and sharing agreement to sign because what we want to encourage as many people as possible to start using the Canvas. There's no cost involved. Next, you can join us. We're launching a crowdfunded collaborative project to create the toolkit to design better businesses. The project will then publish a book that explains the toolkit, including the new Canvas, the known good answers to the 14 questions the Canvas asks, and the steps to use the Canvas effectively. The 
core team of the book now consists of an international group of 13 co-authors. And of course, we're using the Strongly Sustainable Canvas to design the business model for the project and the business we plan to launch to further develop the toolkit to include an app, versions for specific industries and for classroom use and so forth. The details of the crowdfunding are now being planned, but we already can say that we'll be seeking both individuals and organizations to back the project. As one of several incentives, our backers will also get immediate commercial rights to use the new canvas and have input into the content of the book. We're hoping to publish in 2015, and when we do, the final version of the canvas will be released under a Creative Commons license without a commercial restriction, so everybody will be able to use it. Finally, if you'd like to connect, share and learn from the other people involved in our project, creating better tools to design better businesses, we have both a LinkedIn group and a Facebook page to help with this. So we hope to see you there soon. I hope you found this introduction to the Better Strongly Sustainable Business Model Canvas useful, and I hope you want to stay in touch with our work as we bring these better tools to the world, perhaps even get involved yourself. All the links to connect with our project are shown on this slide, and below the video there's a link to download the slides, which have all the speaker's notes and references on them. Thank you.